Hey y'all, this is Coach Schrader with the Eagle Fitness Club. Um, what I want to go over here is what I would call an intro to strength training. Um, so I want you to learn why we're doing stuff. I don't want you to just believe me because I tell you something. I'm going to show this to you, um, but I want you to have some background knowledge so you can understand the fundamentals of training. Um, my whole purpose in getting students to join this club is so I can teach you how to strength train, basically how to get fit, how to get healthy, and to create habits that should last you a lifetime. Okay, so with that being said, I want you to know why, and I want you to pick up on what we're doing. So I, so once you get through high school, um, whether you're in my club for one year or four years, you know how to be fit and healthy for the rest of your life. That is my goal. That is my objective. Um, so I just want to lay down some kind of foundational knowledge for you. Okay. Uh, so to start with this, we have SAR, um, and this is this stands for Strength Adaptation Recovery. Um, the way you can think of this is that the human body is built to respond to its environment. If it's hot, your body's going to sweat. If it's cold, it's going to shiver. This whole process is called homeostasis. There's going to be a stress. Your body is going to adapt to it or, cause, or receive an adaptation after it recovers from, from this thing. So to understand health and fitness programming, uh, we are basically taking these three basic components and we're working them to our advantage. Okay. Um, so first off, number one thing is adaptation is our goals. This is why we are working out. So these, this is your objective and your objective may be different from other people. Okay. There's a lot of different objectives that we could have um, going through this list. We probably want all these things to happen, uh, but we're going to be focusing our priority more on one or two things at a time rather than all of them at the same time. Um, but these are all kind of benefits that you're going to get by joining this club. Generally, people that are uh, strength training, they want to get bigger, faster, stronger. Okay. When we say bigger, that means we want to gain muscle. Okay. We might also want to lose fat with it. If we can get bigger by gaining muscle and losing fat at the same time, that's awesome. Okay, we want to increase our speed and power. Um, so maybe you want to get quicker for sports, maybe just like running. Uh, we want to increase the speed at which you can output force. That's what power is. Okay, um, outside of kind of the weightlifting stuff, uh, we want to generally increase cardiovascular endurance. That's being able to run longer, um, not, lo not losing your breath. Um, in general, we want stronger joints and ligaments because we want to prevent injuries. Okay. We want to do this work in the weight room so that we don't get injured outside of it and we don't get injured during the weight room, okay? Health is always the number one priority when we're doing stuff. So it's, we're not going to be tossing around more weight than we're capable of doing, okay? We don't want to lift to the extent that we are disregarding our health and making it worse, okay? We want to injury-proof ourselves and help us all the way down the path of life, okay? And a lot of you are going to be in sports or athletics, whether that's for Barbers Hill High School or whether that is outside of it. You're playing some club ball um, or just playing intramurals with your friends. Uh, we want to get more athletic um, by doing this. So those are the adaptations. That's what we're going for. That is the whole purpose of this club. Okay. Now, in order to adapt, you have to recover from whatever stress we're going to get to. Uh, just real quick on recovery, I'm going to hit much more details on this later on but for right now um, here's what we got recovery essentially is going to come down to nutrition and rest okay the harder you work out the more you're going to need to recover okay if you work out hard on monday you can't necessarily work hard on tuesday and wednesday and thursday there's not going to be enough recovery between those sessions and you're going to do more harm than good okay now along with rest and sleep is the nutrition aspect Whatever your goal is, whatever your objective is, you have to have a diet that's going to support those goals, okay? Outside of when you very first start lifting, when you very first start lifting, you can build some muscle and lose some fat at the same time, um, but outside that very beginning, your diet's going to have to support muscle growth. You want more muscle, you're going to have to eat more and gain a little weight, okay? Um, if you want to lose fat, you're going to have to eat a little less, and that's... You have to have a caloric deficit to do that. Um, so I'll get into all those other details at another point in time. Um, just for now, the general goal here is if you want to gain muscle, you got to eat enough protein and calories to support it. You want to aim for one gram per
per pound of lean body mass. Okay. So if you're 200 pounds and you're 20% body fat, that means you've got 80% lean body mass. So 80% of 200, that's 160 grams or 160 pounds. So you would need 160 grams of protein per day if you're 20% body fat and 200 pounds. Okay. Um, so most people, real quick calculation, you can just take your body weight and subtract 10 or 20 from it. And that'll get you real close to a goal that you want to aim for every day. Okay. Let's go back to clicker. Okay. Let's see. Now, stress, okay? Stress is our workout. We are voluntary, voluntarily putting ourselves under stress or hardship, okay? Uh, examples of this is going to be lifting weights. That's what we're doing. Uh, calisthenics or body weight workouts, uh, plyometrics, running. These are all different types of stress. But what's important is you must change the stress over time in order to see continued growth. So, for example, um, you see a lot of these challenges go around on Twitter, Instagram, or social media, whatever you got. Uh, but you might see, hey, here's a challenge to do 50 push-ups, 50 sit-ups, and 50 squats every day for a month. And you see people jump on this. Okay, If you go from being sedentary and not working out at all, not doing anything, you start doing this, you're going to see results. Okay, um, As you go through and do it, it might be super hard the first day. It might take you an hour to get through that that much if you haven't done anything before but it's going to continue to get easier each and every workout okay so eventually you might get to the point where you can get through the whole workout in 10 minutes and then you kind of plateau there you get stuck you stop improving well why is that your stress has not changed you gave enough time for your body to adapt to it and now it's not a hard enough stress to cause you to adapt any further okay so how do you make make this harder well, you could increase reps from 50 to 60 to 70. So you can do this gradually over time. But you can't just do that forever. You can't go until you're doing 200 or 500 each a day. That's not realistic. We don't have time for that. There's better ways to manage this. Okay. Um, you could also add resistance like bands or weights to it to make them heavier and harder to do. You could do that. Um, either of these things are going to let you progress further because you are changing the stress. Okay. So if we dive into stress, okay, and this is the core of programming and designing programs, there's three main things to consider, okay? The things that we're going to consider are intensity, and this is how difficult the exercise is. The heavier the weights or the higher the reps at the same weight, those two things are going to improve intensity. Um, for right now, though, let's just focus on intensity as how heavy it is. Higher weight, more intense, okay? Volume is the total amount of work done so we'll consider this sets times reps completed um, so if you're doing three sets of five that's a volume of 15 reps on an exercise if you do four sets of five that's 20 reps if you just increase volume from week to week you're doing more work your stress is increasing you should see continued adaptations but this is something that's hard to do you can't do this forever we don't want to get up to where you're doing 20 hard sets of five or even five hard sets of five can be very difficult Okay, and then frequency is just how often the work is done. Are you squatting once per week or are you squatting three times per week? Okay, can you squat seven times per week? Probably not. Okay, um, so we got to balance these three things to have an effective program. Now, the core of, of um, program design, again, we've got these three main components. We want to apply them in what is called MED or the minimum effective dose. And what this means is to give the minimum amount of work necessary to get the desired adaptation. And all programming should center around this concept. Okay. We don't want to do more work, more effort, higher weight, more volume than we have to to get a good effective adaptation. Okay. So we can go on a very, we want to slow our progression down where it is effective and simple. Okay. So we're going to start with the simplest possible workout that we can that's going to produce strength and muscle. We're going to make the smallest change necessary to keep progressing as long as possible. So we're going to follow that, that program. As it stops working, we're going to make one small change. 
that will keep us progressing even longer. Then we're going to make one more small change. And we always make small changes. We don't want to change a bunch of things at the same time um, because it's just not necessary. And then you end up bouncing around and program hopping, and you don't actually figure out what works best for you and your body. Okay, so we're going to start pretty much everybody with the same thing and then we go from there. But our design philosophy here is always minimum effective dose. We want bang for buck. OK, so as far as balancing intensity, volume and frequency, again, this is you have to have a balance between these three things. There is no way you can possibly exert maximum effort. So lifting as heavy weight as possible for multiple sets you can't do that at all if you're doing a one rep max you can't do it on a second set that wouldn't make it a one rep max and you definitely can't be doing this stuff multiple times per week your body's just not going to be able to handle that because there's not enough time to recover from it so again it's all about finding the balance between these three variables uh, so i recommend to the vast majority of people we're going to keep frequency at three times per week this means we're going to going to train three times per week Okay, this is great for people starting out. We want to keep these workouts within an hour or so, um, less than that. Everybody has three hours per week they can give to making their life better, to improving their health, to improving their fitness. So I, in my mind, there's not really an excuse to not be doing this. You just got to buckle up and do it. Um, so we're going to stick to three. We're not going to do more than that. We don't have to do more than that. You see a lot of guys going to the gym six, seven times a week, and they're not getting stronger because they don't know how to program right. We're going to do it three times per week. We're going to go hard. Okay. Novices. This is a good thing to be a novice. I'm going to hit more on this. When you are a novice, this means you are a new lifter. Okay. Th that could be zero experience. That could be two years experience, depending on what you've been doing. If you've just been going to the gym and doing random stuff and not sticking to anything, you can still be a novice. You guys are still in high school. You are primed for growth. Here is what we do as a novice. Novices can handle slight increases, so not huge increases, in volume or intensity every single workout. Okay, Th This can be three times per week. We can increase weight three times per week, and you can recover from it. Okay, It is fantastic to be a novice because you can make very small changes, and you can get stronger, and you can set a PR, a personal record, every single week. Okay, This is the dream. Once you reach an intermediate level, there's going to be trade-offs, okay? And if you want to increase weight, you're going to have to decrease volume to compensate, okay? If you want to increase volume, you're going to have to decrease intensity or frequency to compensate, okay? There becomes trade-offs. When you're a novice, you can change one, one thing at a time, and you can recover from it. And we just want to ride that as long as we possibly can. That's our minimum effective dose. So for novice training, again, vast majority of high school students are going to fall into this category and it's awesome you can add weight to the bar every time you work out you're not going to have to change the frequency the volume or the exercises we can just do the same thing over and over with a little more weight and you can get fantastic growth you can get way stronger you can build way more muscle this program is simple it's effective okay now, to build off of this, we want to choose as few exercises as possible so that we can target our whole body and keep adding weight. That is the goal. So when we come down to as few exercises as possible, it's important to understand the difference between compound lifts and isolation lifts. Okay, Compound lifts are going to be movements that hit multiple muscle groups at the same time. So example would be chin-up. The chin-up is going to hit your biceps. It's going to hit all of your back muscles, anything that pulls, the chin up's going to be working it. So that's the rear delts, that's the mid traps, that's the lats, that's the spinal erectors. All of those things are going to be working when you do a chin up. When you do a squat, that's going to hit all of your leg muscles, your quads, your glutes, your hamstrings, your calves to a lesser extent. It's going to work your spinal erectors and your back muscles. It's going to work your abs, your core, because you have to brace and hold that weight on your back and keep it erect. It's pretty much a whole body movement okay and we'll talk about all the other what I call the big six in a moment but compound lifts are getting multiple muscle groups at the same time isolation movements are movements that are going to target one single muscle at a time that's what isolation means it means to isolate to do one thing at a time 
So examples of these would be dumbbell curls, tricep extensions, uh, movements like that. Okay. Every program, the core of it should be compound lifts. You can do four compound lifts in a day and hit every single muscle in your body. Okay. If you do that with isolations, you're going to have to do 20 plus isolation exercises to hit every muscle. We don't have time for that. It's not effective. Okay. We will add isolation lifts in later because they are for targeting specific weaknesses, not just a weak or not all weaknesses. It's a specific weakness because we can only do so many at a time. Okay. When you're a novice, everything is a weakness because all of it can get stronger. We don't need isolations yet. Okay. You'd have to do way too many. We're going to hit the compounds. We're going to get strong on the compounds. And after we've done that for a while, then you're going to see, Hey, my rear delts are lagging or my biceps are lagging or my triceps are lagging. Or I think if I got my quads to grow a little more, my squat would go up. And then we will pick specific things to target those specific weaknesses. But again, in the beginning, everything's a weakness. We want to use compounds. So everybody uh, that does program talks about the big four. The big four are squat, bench, deadlift, and overhead press. These will hit almost every muscle in the body. Okay, A lot of people think deadlift does back and it is working some back components uh, but i think it's super important to add a vertical pull and a horizontal pull so we're going to throw in chin-ups and barbell rows and when we first start we're going to focus on squat bench deadlift and chin-ups and then once we get used to doing those for a bit then we'll add the overhead press and the barbell rows uh, but these are the big six okay all of our programs focus on these and they're to get these six bigger Doing these six will hit literally every muscle group in the body, and it's going to do it efficiently. If we can hit every muscle in the body in four exercises per day, we can focus on those. We can do heavier weight on those every time, and we can progress everything at the same time. So that is our objective. So on our novice program, okay, um, I'm going to stop the video here in a minute and make a separate one just explaining exactly what to do in this novice program. Uh, but everybody that joins the club, I want you to run this program, okay? And it's, again, it is a great thing to be a novice. It's not a bad thing. It means you are primed and you are ready to grow for at least one to five, six months. The longer you can stick on this program and progress on it, the, the stronger you're going to be, okay? We're going to be adding five pounds every time we do do a lift. So that's three times per week. That's 15 pounds per, per week. That's 45 pounds in a month. If you start squatting the bar six months later, you're going to be doing two, 300 pounds if you can stick to it. Okay. Um, so the better you can, the longer you can ride it out, the stronger you're going to be. Okay. Now, the other thing this does is it lets us focus on learning how to perform the big six exercises and how to do them right. You have to get your technique down. Once you get that dialed in, because again, we're just focusing on these four things over and over. We get stronger at them. We get better at doing them. And then we'll get to the point where we build up to a one rep max so we can see how strong we are. Once we have that number, we can start going to some intermediate programs that use percentages of that number. Okay, that's when, again, programming gets a little more complex. Um, so we want to build up to figure out Let's get as strong as we can doing this linear progression for as long as we can and we'll find our max and then we'll make a change. Okay. And again, this novice program is the simplest, most effective way to gain strength and muscle. Teenagers, all of you have super high testosterone, probably the highest it'll ever be in your life. And you are absolutely primed to go grow like weeds just doing this. Okay. Three hours or one hour per day, three days a week, eat like a horse, get in your protein, you will get stronger. So again, um, phase one is going to be a linear progression. I'm going to go ahead and stop here so that I'll, I'll make a second video on the actual program. I'm going to show you the spreadsheet and how to fill it out. Um, so that'll be that.